the type of research that I'm involved in is understanding human error. Now there's several different classifications of human error. There's error that's associated with a lack of knowledge. A user of a particular device, if you use the example that you've got a new mobile phone, you might not know all the functions, so maybe you know you might want to place a phone call, for example, but you don't know how to do that on a particular device. So there, you can make an error when using devices that you're unfamiliar with, and these errors are often associated with a lack of knowledge. Slip errors are an everyday occurrence. They can be associated with everyday routine. For example, you might watch a weather forecast and realize that you should take your umbrella with you. But on the way out of a house, for example, you might realize that you've forgotten your umbrella. You have the knowledge that you needed your umbrella for a particular day, but for some reason you've forgotten it. But of course, people will develop strategies to avoid these types of errors. I mean, a classic example is that if you, if you know you want to take your umbrella with you, you put it in a position when you leave your house that you're going to walk past so you'll see it and remember it as a cue to memory. I mean, so this type of cue is almost can be conceptualised as a, as a resilient strategy that individuals can develop to remain guarded over making a particular everyday errors. Training is important for the avoidance of knowledge-based errors. If a user simply doesn't know how to use a device, then they're more likely to make errors if they've got insufficient training. However, there's a whole set of human errors, including errors where of omission, where people forget a particular task step. They might have done that particular routine a number of times, but due to a circumstance such as an interruption or um, just the lack of attention, an error might occur. So we have to think about how do we safeguard against those types of errors and one way of doing that is through device design. Now with device design some of the modifications can be quite trivial but as long as they support what a user's thinking and their intentions then the likelihood of error could be minimized. A classic example is using an ATM machine, a cash machine um, before they were redesigned, users would often walk away from the machine without their card. So cash machines um, have been redesigned so that they give the card um, before dispensing the money. So a simple modification like that can actually um, avoid human error.